This is your Tech News Briefing for Tuesday, July 5th. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal, filling in for Zoe Thomas. A few weeks ago, we talked about a Google engineer who said he believed one of the company's artificial intelligence chatbots had become sentient. The news prompted no small measure of public reaction. What is going on here? I mean, how on earth can they have conversations? I mean, Lambda passed the Turing test. Well, I hate to say it, Annette, but this really is not sentient artificial intelligence. This is a future message for Skynet. I never insulted robots, okay? Jokes aside, the incident does raise the question, how close are we really to machines achieving consciousness? AI technology does permeate our daily lives, and companies have been investing in this area to keep pushing its boundaries after all. But what is it actually capable of? Our reporter Karen Howe has been speaking with industry leaders and experts about this, and she joins me now. Hi, Karen. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi, Julie. Thanks so much for having me. What are some of the more ambitious goals that companies have with artificial intelligence? Where do they want this tech to go? Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. In, I think, the AI industry, there's sort of a split that's happened where some of the larger companies are much more focused on just very practical use cases, like a really unsexy back office logistics type AI. But then there's this sort of sci-fi element to AI development as well, where AI as a scientific field was actually originally founded on this sort of wild premise to try and recreate all of human intelligence or create a super intelligence, something that will ultimately be able to do everything better than humans. And the term that people use for this kind of really ambitious sci-fi like AI is artificial general intelligence. And a lot of companies have been pouring money into this tech. Google, for instance, has been betting big on language generation systems. Ironically, it was two of its own engineers that came out and warned about the dangers of AI, uh, Margaret Mitchell and Tim Nick Gebru. They were co-leads on the ethical AI team at Google. What have these dissenters been saying? What Mitchell and Gebru warned was, as we continue to see these systems perform these like seemingly really human-like things, generate essays, start talking in this very human-like way in the form of a chatbot, people are going to start trusting these systems far more than they actually deserve to be trusted. Because in AI research, there's sort of an understanding that no matter how much these systems have been able to mimic human-like speech, That doesn't actually mean that they understand what they're saying. It doesn't mean that they understand what humans are saying. These systems are just good at making associations between words, which is ultimately what helps you extract the right results from the web in response to a search query. But for the average public user, they're not going to really understand that gap. And so... They were kind of warning at the time, the more that we have this gap, the more it actually becomes dangerous because people are going to start using these systems in places that they're not supposed to use them. They're going to start trusting them more than they want. So an example that they gave in a paper they wrote at the time about this was Facebook's AI system in 2017 mistranslated good morning in Arabic to hurt them in English and attack them in Hebrew. And it actually led to the arrest of a Palestinian man by Israeli police because they just believed the translation and didn't actually check with an Arabic speaking colleague what it actually said. And it took them a while to actually realize the error. Facebook said in response that they're getting better and better every day and that these AI systems have improved since then. Yeah, and this idea of perception versus reality with AI and the issue that Gibru and Mitchell brought up, it oddly clashed with an incident surrounding another engineer at Google, Blake Lemoyne. Lemoyne was essentially chatting with an experimental chat box called Lambda and became convinced that Lambda had become sentient. He even believed it deserved legal representation. Mm -hmm. The important caveat to this is that Lemoyne specifically says that he is a mystic incorporating aspects of Christianity and um, spiritual practices such as meditation. So when he talks about 
Lambda being sentient. He's specifically talking in a religious capacity as a mystic priest, not in his capacity as a scientist. And so he hired a lawyer for Lambda to talk to Lambda about Lambda giving consent to be part of these experiments to be used in this way. Since then, Google has come out and really been adamant that Lambda is not sentient. And it's important to note that in mainstream consensus, scientific consensus, it's also considered an incredibly fringe opinion that AI systems could become sentient because ultimately they're just data processing machines. So Google came out and said, this machine's not sentient. The scientific community has come out and also said, no, machines are not sentient. But Blake Lemoyne's story spread like wildfire. What were the real life implications of this and the gap that exists between perception versus reality when it comes to AI? Yeah, so researchers definitely were alarmed by how much this narrative took hold because it once again reveals this really, really big gap between perception and reality. And it's not just dangerous because of some of the examples that were raised, like Facebook's mistranslation. It's also dangerous because ultimately policymakers are part of the public. They're part of the people that become beholden to this perception gap. And so increasingly, more and more of the regulations or proposed regulations that are addressing AI harms are starting to specifically just target harms that come from AI systems from being hyper-competent. So things like discrimination, manipulation, this inherently assumes that these AI systems are really good at what they do, but what they've sort of left out of the conversation is harms that come from AI systems just not working. All right, that was our reporter, Karen Howe. Karen, thank you again for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.